Hello everyone, I am Vipin Kumar and I welcome you all to the India's most comprehensive preparation platform for GATE and ESC, Baiju's exam prep. So we are back again, this is the third session in our HPCL series of thermodynamics. We started on 19th, we started on 19th with what? With basics of thermodynamics, okay? And we have seen some HPCL questions that have been asked. And what we have analyzed is basically HPCL questions is like is one liner questions. Okay, it's very basic questions, definition based questions, conceptual questions. And even if they are numerical questions, they are one step solution questions. Okay, so on 19th, we started with basics of thermodynamics. Where, where we have seen what are the different definitions in thermodynamics, okay, major definitions, what is a property, what is a state of system, what is, what is a system, okay, how many types of system there are, okay, and what is zeroth law, what is temperature measurement scales, all the things we have covered in the first session on 19th. Then on 21st of July, what we have seen the first law of thermodynamics. So when we talk about first law of thermodynamics, we talk about three things, closed system, then open system and open system we see steady flow and unsteady flow okay so we have talked about first law of thermodynamics and today we have come 23rd of july we have come to the final session of special which with the second law of thermodynamics where we are going to see the two statements of second law of thermodynamics we are going to see the entropy concept Okay, we are going to see enough questions because this part mostly comes with the numerical part. Okay, like you will see few uh, numericals from this part, but again, very small questions, very small numericals. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to start with the second law of thermodynamics very quickly. Keep joining everyone and let's start this session very quickly. Okay, so what do we have here? Second law of thermodynamics, we have two statements, Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement. So let's start with the first statement, which is Kelvin Planck's statement. Kelvin Planck's statement gives you PMM2, perpetual motion machine 2. What is PMM2? PMM2 is a machine that can work continuously while exchanging heat with only one reservoir. Okay, so that is PMM2. PMM2 is something that will give you work output by interacting heat with only one reservoir. Only one reservoir you have. Okay, only one reservoir you have. You are taking heat and the heat is converting into work. Now, by the first law of thermodynamics, by the first law of thermodynamics, whatever heat is given to the system will be converted to work okay that is the first law of thermodynamics now what happens so kelvin planck says that that this machine is impossible it says it is impossible to develop a device that works on a thermodynamic cycle and produces work continuously that can continuously give you work while exchanging heat with only one reservoir it is impossible you cannot develop such machine okay now why is it impossible because we have seen in our nature that whenever one energy is converted into another energy always there are some losses okay always there are some losses in the form of heat this we have seen okay so for example if you are riding a automobile your uh, bike or your car so what we have seen the chemical energy of fuel is converted into mechanical energy Okay, what does the engine do? Engine converts the mechan the chemical energy of fuel into thermal energy. Thermal energy is used to move the engine. Okay, now we also see when this conversion happens from chemical energy to mechanical energy, your engine gets heated up. And engine, because it is at higher temperature from the surrounding, some heat is always rejected to the surrounding. So what does it mean? It means there are always losses. There are always losses. 
सो कैलविन प्लैंग स्टेटमेंट गिव्स यू द बेसिस फॉर हीट इंजन गिव्स यू द बेसिस फॉर हीट इंजन अगेन वन मोर टाइम वॉट इज कैलविन प्लैंग स्टेटमेंट इट सेज पी एम एम टू इज इम्पॉसिबल पी एम एम टू इज वॉट इट इज अ मशीन दैट कैन गिव यू कॉन्टिन्यूअस वर्क आउटपुट वाइल एक्सचेंजिंग हीट फ्रॉम अ सिंगल रिजर्वर सो कैलविन प्लैंग सेज इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल देन वॉट इज पॉसिबल If this is not possible, then what is possible? So the answer is that such machine is possible. What you will get work output for sure. You will get work output, but and you will absorb also heat from a uh, high temperature. This is high temperature reservoir. But as I said, that there will always be losses. So there will be some heat losses. at lower temperature as well so sink is at lower temperature and q2 is a loss q2 is that loss so earlier we were saying so whatever q1 you are giving will be converted into w net right now kelvin planck says no kelvin planck says q1 is not equal to w net but q1 is equals to w net plus losses plus losses what are these losses losses is some heat that is lost at lower temperature surrounding so some part of q1 is converted into w net and some part of q1 is lost to the surrounding is lost to the surrounding so this is what kelvin planck's statement tells you that whole energy whole heat will not be converted into work some part will always be lost to the surrounding now when you see later on the concept of available energy and unavailable energy is the same thing okay i am giving you heat q1 the amount of work that you can obtain is the available energy so this is the available energy and there will always be some losses you cannot do anything to 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 you know to uh, uh, i mean there will always be some losses okay you can minimize the losses but you cannot cut it down completely so this is unavailable energy unavailable energy okay this is an available energy and unavailable energy is not a new concept it's the same thing okay now let's come up with the efficiency definition efficiency is always defined for anything it is the desired effect what is the desired effect that if you have a system what do you want from it now from a heat engine what do you want you want work output mechanical work output okay so efficiency is always defined as desired out uh, desired output divided by given input in if you want this desired output what you have to give that is given input so in our case when i talk about heat engine what is the desired output desired output is work network network and in order to get this network what i have to do i have to give q1 heat i have to give q1 heat okay so now network is what network is basically work compressor minus work of work turbine expander work minus compressor work okay or let's not write it this way now let's do a energy balance let's do a energy balance in this system heat engine so if i do a energy balance what can i do so i can say energy in is equals to energy out now you see if this is my system this is my system heat engine is my system what is energy in what is coming in so q1 is coming in what is going out what is going out w net is going out plus q2 is going out okay q2 is going out so i want w net i have to put here w net right so w net i can write as q1 minus q2 w net is q1 minus q2 okay so let me put it here q1 minus q2 by q1 and i can say 1 minus 
Q2 by Q1. This is the efficiency for a heat engine. So, I can write 1 minus Q2 by Q1. Is this okay? I hope this is okay. By using this formula only, you will solve your questions. You don't need anything extra. HBCL, if I talk about, this formula is more than enough. Okay. So, this is about Kelvin Planck's statement. Let's move on to the next statement. Let's move on to the next statement. So, what is the next statement? Next statement is Clausius statement. Okay. So, Clausius statement tells you that it is impossible, it is impossible for a device or for a thermodynamic cycle to transfer heat from low temperature to high temperature. Okay. You see, in nature, what happens? In nature, what happens? Always the heat transfer happens from high temperature to low temperature. Isn't it? Always. If you bring a hot body and a cold body with each other, you will bring in contact. So, what is going to happen? Always heat transfer will happen in the decreasing temperature direction. From high temperature to low temperature. Always. Okay. Now, if you have to transfer heat from low temperature to high temperature, it is not possible naturally. Naturally, it is not going to happen. You bring two bodies, one hot body, one cold body. Heat transfer will never happen naturally from low temperature to high temperature. Naturally, it will not happen. Now, it is very important to know that, first of all, what is the definition? It is impossible to develop a divide that works on a thermodynamic cycle and transfers heat from low temperature to high temperature without any external work input. Now, this point is very important. Lossius is telling you, heat transfer from low temperature to high temperature will never happen without any external input. If you are not giving any external input, then this will not happen. So, what does it mean? It means, if you are giving work input, you can do it. You can transfer high, uh, heat from low temperature to high temperature, but with external input. So, you have to provide. Look, this device is not possible. This device is not possible. It is not possible. Okay. But if I give an external input, if I give some work to it, then it becomes possible. So, now it is possible. Now, it is possible. So, heat transfer from low temperature to high temperature naturally is not possible. But if you want to do it, you provide some external input. For example, if we see in our uh, home refrigerators, always what happens? Heat transfer inside the ref oh, uh, that, um, uh, temperature inside the refrigerator is lower than the surrounding. But still, heat transfer always, what does the ref refrigerator do? It takes out heat and gives to the surrounding. Surrounding is at high higher temperature, system is at lower temperature. Now, it is continuously doing it. But how? Because we are providing electrical energy. We are providing external energy in form of electrical energy. Then this, this is the reason that we are able to do it. Okay. Now this device, this device is called as reverse, uh, this is called as refrigerator cycles. Okay. Refrigeration cycles. Okay. Now there can be, uh, it can be used as, it can be used as, this cycle can be used as refrigerator and heat pump and heat pump okay now what does a refrigerator do a refrigerator transfers uh, heat from low temperature to high temperature so the aim is to maintain low temperature low temperature and that is the reason, look, this is your low temperature. This is your refrigerator. And this high temperature body is your surrounding. Now, your device, your refrigerator have to continuously take out this heat Q2 
in order to maintain the refrigerator in a desired temperature range okay so for example if you want to maintain 10 degrees celsius inside your refrigerator if you want to maintain 10 degrees celsius inside your refrigerator one second if you want to maintain 10 degrees celsius inside the refrigerator you have to continuously reject out some heat from the system inside from the refrigerator inside okay and therefore if you talk about refrigerator then q2 is your desired output q2 you do not care what is happening but you have to continuously take out q2 because you want to maintain your system at 10 degree celsius okay so your desired output is q2 desired output is q2 what happens with heat pump now heat pump is a device that you use in your homes to heat up okay during winter season because winter season what happens winter season surrounding outside outside is at low temperature outside is at low temperature for example 10 degree celsius but you want to heat up your house or your room at some comfortable temperature which is let's say 20 degree celsius okay so what happens you want to maintain you want to maintain i am talking about winter season winter season okay december in india let's say uh, december what is happening inside your home you want to maintain 20 degree celsius outside surrounding is at 10 degree celsius now you install a heat pump now what does a heat pump do heat pump takes heat from the surrounding which is at lower temperature and still gives you in your home to keep it at comfortable temperature so when i talk about heat pump okay so heat pump the aim is to maintain high temperature high temperature okay this is your aim this is the aim for the heat pump so heat pump has to continuously give q1 heat inside your home no matter what if you want to maintain your house at 20 degrees celsius so whatever heat pump has to do it will have to transfer heat q1 continuously to your home okay so what is your desired output for heat pump q1 heat q1 q1 heat i have to provide continuously only then i will be able to maintain my uh, house at 20 degrees celsius so we now we know that heat engine is based on kelvin planck's statement refrigerator and heat pump is based on clausius statement okay is that okay okay so now now we need to find out the coefficient of per performance coefficient of performance you know for work producing devices heat engine is a work producing device so for work producing devices what do we do we calculate efficiency for work absorbing devices work absorbing devices okay so in a refrigerator and heat pump we are giving work so they are work absorbing devices okay so for work absorbing devices we define coefficient of performance or cop okay now this is also a performance parameter this is also a performance parameter now again cop is defined in the same way desired output upon given input given input now what is given input we have to provide give we have to give w but desired output is changing so if i talk about refrigerator what is the desired output i already told you q2 is the desired output q2 is the desired very important a lot of people get confused between cop of refrigerator and heat pump in refrigerator our desired output is q2 q2 is the lower temperature heat the heat that you have to take out from lower temperature that is q2 okay for heat pump desired output is q1 the heat that you have to provide to for the high temperature okay that is q1 now again if i do energy balance if i do according to first law if i do energy balance okay so energy in is equals to energy out now what is coming in 
now what is my system this is my system this is my system okay so what is energy in coming work net work is coming in plus q2 is coming in okay and out is q1 out is q1 now i need w so net work is equals to q1 minus q2 q1 minus q2 that is what i am going to substitute here and this is q1 minus q2 q1 minus q2 same here q1 minus q2 q1 minus q2 okay uh, there there is a mistake here it is q1 minus q2 okay i hope that is clear hello gaurav uh, good morning i hope my audio is fine right okay so if you are able to uh, uh, hear me uh, be uh, remain in the session we are going to solve some questions as well okay so anyway uh, so what are we doing we have calculated w and we have substituted here so q1 minus q2 q1 minus q2 very very important whenever you talk about refrigerator and heat pump you have to always focus on the desired effect okay so whenever you talk about refrigerant desired effect is lower temperature heat that you have taken out from the lower temperature and for heat pump always the heat that you have to give at the high temperature okay so q1 is desired effect okay so now using these formulas you can solve questions in hpcl also we are going to solve some questions that have been asked okay now one more relation this you can get directly if you put these values here and you can solve this you can prove this as well but let's not go into that because we have to do a lot of things okay but this relation is important this relation is important from objective point of view they can directly ask you this cop of heat pump is equals to cop of refrigerator plus 1 okay this is important from im objective point of view okay i hope this is clear okay anyway move on now carnot theorem carnot theorem very important carnot theorem okay so carnot theorem says that heat engines operating between a constant temperature source and a constant temperature sink none has a efficiency greater none has a efficiency greater than reversible cycle it states that of all heat engines operating between a given constant temperature source and given constant temperature sinks none has a higher efficiency than a reversible engine okay if you have a reversible in like if you if you want to summarize this statement i will only say that for a given for a fixed high temperature and low temperature reversible engine gives you the maximum efficiency for a given for a fixed high temperature and low temperature reversible engine will give you the maximum efficiency first statement second statement if there are several uh, reversible heat engines that are working and they are working between same temperature limits then their efficiencies will be same their efficiencies will be same okay two statement first for a fixed high temperature and low temperature reversible engine will give you the maximum efficiency and second statement if there are more than one engines working between same high temperature and low temperature their efficiencies will be same okay so reversible efficiency of reversible heat engine one will be equal to reversible heat engine Two will be equal to efficiency of reversible heat engine. Three, but this will only be applicable for a fixed high temperature and low temperature. Okay, this is the second statement, and first statement is efficiency of a reversible heat engine is always maximum compared to the real engine irreversible engine okay and now if i can say that the efficiency of a reversible engine is independent of the working fluid because as long as you have fixed the temperatures as long as you have fixed the temperatures 
the efficiency is fixed for a reversible engine and therefore whatever working fluid you are using inside ref, uh, reversible heat engine it does not matter it is independent it is independent of the working fluid okay so i hope that is clear okay every statement has a objective question every statement reverse efficiency for a reversible heat engine is maximum for a given temp temperatures temperature difference okay if more than one heat engines are working between same temperature limits then their efficiencies are same because their efficiencies are same they are independent of the working fluid they are independent of the working fluid okay also i can prove for a reversible cycle for a reversible cycle it is very very important it is very important for a, i can prove this i mean there is a derivation for it but here we are not concerned about derivation so what can i say for a reversible cycle if i have a reversible heat engine or a reversible uh, refrigerator or heat pump q1 by q2 is equals to t1 by t2 or i can say q1 by t1 is equals to q2 by t2 whatever you want to say very important it is only valid it is only valid for reversible cycle either it is a reversible heat engine reversible refrigerator or reversible heat pump whatever it is only valid for a reversible cycle okay now so what can i do now i am talking about reversible heat engine i am talking about reversible heat engine and i have proved that for for a heat engine for a heat engine efficiency i can say 1 minus q2 by q1 i have just now we derived for a heat engine okay and for a reversible cycle i can say q1 by q2 is equals to t1 by t2 so if i substitute this here i can say efficiency of a reversible heat engine is equals to 1 minus t2 by t1 1 minus t2 by t1 and this efficiency is maximum now you have to be very cautious whenever you see a question you have to see if they have given you a reversible heat engine or not if they have given you a reversible heat engine you can calculate the efficiency by using this formula 1 minus t2 by t1 so what words you will see in question you will see that minimum heat loss or you will say the maximum work output obtained okay so whenever you see these words either they will give you directly that it, it is a reversible engine working on this and this temperature or they will give you a heat engine that is working between these temperatures gives you maximum work output so what engine gives you maximum work output reversible engine so you should be able to read out of the question okay so if they are giving you a reversible heat engine means you can use this formula if they are giving you normal engine it's not reversible then you have to use normal formula which one 1 minus q2 by q1 okay so you have to be very cautious which formula to use okay now this is for heat engine what about for heat pump and refrigerators so if i have a refrigerator cop of a refrigerator is defined as q2 by q1 minus q2 now if i do a little bit modifications in this i can write i can write cop of reversible refrigerator is equals to i can replace q2 by t2 and q1 by t1 and i can write this but again be very cautious this formula this formula equation 2 is only applicable for reversible refrigerator if it is not reversible then you have to use equation 1 very very important okay do not go directly and use the second equation first check is it reversible or not if it is reversible use equation 2 if it is not reversible then use equation 1 actually for reversible you can use anything okay but for irreversible for real engines you you should use only first equation okay now heat pump now heat pump we have q1 here 
heat pump we have q1 here and q1 is replaced by t1 and q2 is replaced by t2 again if it is a reversible heat pump then you can use any equation but this equation is usually used okay if it is reversible you can use this equation if it is irreversible then compulsorily you have to use equation number 1 you cannot use equation number 2 okay equation number 2 is only defined for reversible heat engines refrigerators or heat pumps okay clear okay so there are certain statements of carnot theorem and any any statement you can see in the objective question so just let's understand them and move on okay so no heat engine can produce more work per unit heat input then reversible so what is a heat engine this is heat engine i am giving heat q1 w is obtained and q2 is rejected q2 is a loss q2 is a loss now what i am saying that for a given no heat engine can be more work per unit heat input if q1 is fixed if q1 is fixed if q1 is fixed then for a reversible for a reversible engine q net is maximum q net is maximum okay q net is maximum so no heat engine can produce more work per unit heat input than reversible heat engine okay for reversible this is for reversible okay second you can say it in a different way no heat engine requires less heat input okay if net work is fixed then q1 the amount of heat required the amount of heat required for a given work input is minimum is minimum so you have to give less and you can get more for a reversible engine okay so this is reversible these are two statement if q1 is fixed then maximum work can be obtained if work is fixed then you have to give minimum heat okay this is for heat engine for reversible now what happens for uh, what happens for refrigerator and heat pump so refrigerator and heat pump is no refrigeration cycle requires less work input okay now what happens in a q2 i am sorry q1 q2 and you have to give work network so in a refrigerator in a refrigerator if q2 is fixed if q2 is fixed then net work will be minimum you require minimum work to absorb a amount of fixed amount of heat from low temperature okay this is minimum for a rever for a reversible refrigerator you have to give minimum work for a given amount of heat okay for a reversible refrigerator or i can say if if net work net is fixed then q2 will be maximum q2 will be maximum for reversible refrigerators okay so i hope it's very clear that what what we actually mean basically a reversible heat engine or refrigerators gives you maximum efficiency or maximum cop maximum efficiency or maximum cop okay so you read this statement i i i know that you will have some confusion i hope that you will have some confusion okay uh, just by reading them so you wait for some time next time when you come here stop and read it properly okay unless it is very clear okay now we have to move on so let's see the first question of hpcl 2021 from second law of thermodynamics okay a refrigerator absorbs the heat okay so let me write given first is it is a refrigerator it is a refrigerator okay 
Second is it absorbs heat. So what does the refrigerator do? Is it is a device that absorbs heat Q2 from low temperature and transfers it to high temperature. And for this, you have to provide some work. Okay. Now it absorbs heat 27 kilojoule per second. So what is absorbing? Q2. 27 kilojoule per second at minimum temperature means at lower temperature means at lower temperature the work required to run the refrigerator i need to find out what is this work net if the coefficient of performance is 3 so coefficient of performance is given to be 3 hello manandeep sir uh, okay so uh, cop is 3 now, how we can define COP? We all know the desired output upon input. What is desired output? Desired output is Q2 upon network. Network. Okay. Now, I need to find out network. So, network is equals to Q2 by 3. Q2 is given 27 kilojoule per second by 3. And therefore, network is equals to 9 kilojoule per second. Okay, 9 kilojoule per second. So, do you understand that it is just one line question? Just one line question. You don't have to draw diagram. You don't have to write anything. Just write COP equation and it's solved. Okay, more, not more than 30 seconds it, could, it should take to solve this question. Okay, and this is HPCL 2021 question. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. Again, a refrigerator working on the principle of Carnot cycle operates between two temperatures of minus 23 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius. The coefficient of performance of the refrigeration system is. So, they have seen that it is a Carnot cycle, means reversible cycle. What is it? It's a reversible cycle okay so they have given lower temperature is equals to minus 23 degree celsius and higher temperature is equals to 27 degree celsius so what can you do you can calculate them in kelvin so when you do that it is 250 kelvin and I hope you all know this, right? How to calculate? You just add 273 Kelvin, okay? And this is 300 Kelvin. This 300 Kelvin. So, COP is defined as, COP of a refrigerator is defined as Q2 upon Q1 minus Q2. We all know this, isn't it? Uh, COP of a refrigerator. But if I talk about reversible or Carnot refrigerator, I can also write T2 upon T1 minus T2. Isn't it? T2 upon T1 minus T2. Let me put the values. Uh, so, T2 is a lower temperature, 250. And T1 is 300 minus 250. So, it is 250 by 50. And it is 5. So, COP is 5. Okay. COP is 5. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. A reversible engine. Again, they have clearly given you it's a reversible engine. Okay. With 25% efficiency. So, first of all, what do we have? We have a reversible heat engine. We have a reversible heat engine. Okay. Now, the efficiency of this reversible heat engine, they have given us 25%, 0.25. Okay. With a high temperature of 127 degree Celsius. So, T higher, T higher is equals to 127 degree Celsius so, 127 degree Celsius is what? 300, right? Um, I'm sorry, 400 Kelvin. 
ओके दे आर आस्किंग टेल अस द सिंक टेम्परेचर टी लोअर आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट टी लोअर आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट ओके सो हाउ डू आई डिफाइन द रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन एफिशियंसी रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन इज इक्वल्स टू वन माइनस टी टू बाई टी वन और आई कैन से टी लोअर बाई टी हायर ओके नाउ दिस इज जीरो पॉइंट टू फाइव इज इक्वल्स टू वन माइनस टी लोअर और टी हायर इज फोर हंड्रेड ओके सो टी लोअर बाई फोर हंड्रेड इज इक्वल्स टू वन माइनस जीरो पॉइंट टू फाइव And T lower by 400 is equals to 0.75, and if you multiply it, you will get 300, 300 Kelvin. And in degree Celsius, I can say that 300 minus 273, it is 27 degree Celsius, 27 degree. Celsius. Okay, so that is your answer. This is also HPCL question. This is also a HPCL question. Okay, let's move on to the next question. A reversible engine operates with a high temperature. A reversible engine operates with a high temperature of 127 degree Celsius and low temperature. Again, high temperature is 127 degree Celsius. so it is 400 kelvin low temperature is 47 47 degree celsius so 47 is what 320 kelvin now they have given us they have given us it is a reversible heat engine it is a reversible heat engine now i already know how to calculate reversible engine efficiency 1 minus t lower upon t higher is equals to 1 minus 320 by 400. 320 by 400 and 4. Uh, this is 8. This is 10. 1 minus 0.8. And efficiency of reversible heat engine comes out to be 0.2. Or twenty percent, zero point two or twenty percent. Okay, very simple, very simple questions you will see in HPCL. Okay, so twenty percent is the efficiency of this reversible heat engine. Okay, let's move on to the next question. It is it's impossible for heat to flow from a body of lower temperature to a body of higher temperature without the aid of external work. This statement is Kirchhoff's statement, Bratton's statement, Kelvin-Planck's statement, or Clausius statement. So we all know we just discussed two minutes ago that it is which one? Clausius statement. It is Clausius statement. Okay. Kelvin-Planck's statement says that it is impossible for a thermodynamic cycle to produce work continuously. while exchanging heat from a single reservoir so it gives you heat engine it gives you refrigerator and heat pump very simple okay so very quickly let's move on to clausius theorem clausius theorem so now we have moved on to the entropy portion okay clausius theorem so clausius theorem tells you That the cyclic integral of dQ by t, cyclic integral of dQ by t, for a reversible cycle is equal to zero. Okay, cyclic integral of dQ by t for a reversible cycle is equal to zero. This is called as Clausius theorem. Directly objective question you will get. Okay, directly objective question you will get. What is Clausius theorem? Cyclic integral of dQ by t for a reversible cycle is equal to zero. now can you tell me one thing now can you sir tell me one thing we in the first in the basics of thermodynamics in the uh, first session on the 19th july of session what we have talked about cyclic integral for a property cyclic integral for a property is equals to zero 
okay because property is a point function if you come back at the same point its value remains same so p2 minus p1 is equals to 0 and Clausius says that cyclic integral of dq by t is also 0 so if i compare these two statements if i compare a and b so i can conclude something what can i conclude that dq by t is a property is a property okay this p is property okay this p is property not pressure because cyclic integral of a property is zero or can closest statement is telling me that cyclic integral of dq by t is also zero so if i club these two statements i can conclude that cyclic integral that dq by t is a property and this property i have named as entropy this property i have named as entropy okay now in order to define entropy i can say it is the measure this statement i usually don't say okay but this is how I, it is written so and this is how they ask you okay so just to know that what is it is the measure of randomness disorderness of the system okay this is how usually you know like they frame the question but basically there is a lot around entropy and which i also covered uh, in you know like in the last series entropy series and you can see like all the five i have done five hours of entropy okay so it's a lot of information that you can get from there but from hpcl point of view this much is enough okay so don't worry about it so entropy is defined as in physical terms it is the measure of randomness and disorderness but if you want to visualize entropy it's simple that whenever you deviate whenever your randomness increases whatever i am doing whatever i am doing a natural in a natural way so it is always in a disorder way it, it is always in a disorder way look if i am if i am monitored then what will like someone will say sir you have to move in a straight line that means i am being monitored but if i do naturally if i do it naturally then i will never move in a straight line i'll some someday i'll go in this direction someday i'll go someday i'll like go like this okay so basically there is a lot of disorderness associated with every natural action that you take uh, whatever naturally you do whatever naturally you do there is some disorderness associated with it okay it always disorderness always increases and this disorderness is called as entropy now i know this is not enough but if you want to understand the physical you know uh, significance how to visualize it physically then i would recommend you one thing you go to bp uh, baiju's exam prep uh, youtube channel english channel okay and you type physical significance of entropy of entropy one session i have taken one hour session no formulas nothing okay no equations just i have talked about how you can visualize entropy in nature okay so i would recommend if you have any confusion about entropy just to see how to visual because there are there are a lot of people who have who have doubt about this so don't worry go there and just take one session if you like go uh, for other sessions as well there are total five sessions this is the first session take a look on that okay now so we were at clausius theorem and i have said that dq by t is a property it is defined as entropy entropy is defined as the measure of randomness and disorderness of the system okay so dq by t of reversible system i have said uh, defined as ds s is entropy it is denoted by entropy okay now clausius inequality we are going to see some questions from it okay directly you will get question directly you will get question what is clausius inequality it says for a cycle 
फॉर अ साइकिल साइक्लिक इंटीग्रल ऑफ डी क्यू बाई टी इज ऑलवेज लेस देन चेंज इन साइक्लिक इंटीग्रल ऑफ डी एस नाउ डी एस डी एंट्रोपी इज अ प्रॉपर्टी राइट इट इज अ प्रॉपर्टी एंड फॉर अ साइकिल फॉर अ साइकिल वी ऑल नो फॉर अ साइकिल चेंज इन प्रॉपर्टी सो चेंज इन एंट्रोपी इज इक्वल टू जीरो so let me put this here i can say cyclic integral of dq by t is less than equal to 0 very very important it's very very important now again it is only valid for a cycle it is only valid for a cycle a lot of people get confused in this a lot of students get confused in this because there are other equations as well other definitions as well so we are going to see them one by one don't worry first of all you note down that this is specifically for a cycle okay so very important clausius inequality is cyclic integral of dq by t is less than equal to 0 but this statement is only valid for a cycle you see we have a cyclic integral here we have a cyclic integral here that means it is only valid for a cycle okay now from this i can Uh, conclude three statements first if cyclic integral of dq by t is equal to 0 if it is equal to 0 it is a reversible cycle very very important if it is less than 0 it is irreversible cycle but the cycle is possible it can happen it is possible but if it is greater than 0 they try to confuse you so many in so many ways okay so you have to be very clear cyclic integral of dq by t is always less than equal to 0 it is equal to 0 for a reversible cycle it is less than 0 for a irreversible cycle and if it is greater than 0 then it is not possible then this cycle is not possible it is impossible it is impossible very 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 important point okay it is impossible okay now this is for a cycle for a process for a process earlier we saw about cycle for a process i can say cyclic integral of dq by t is less than equal to 0 this was for the cycle for a cycle now for a process i can say integral of dq by t is less than equal to integral of ds integral of ds okay and this is for a process for a process so from here i can write this ds is always greater than dq by t you write this down you write this down because it is only valid for a process for a process okay when i talk about process it constitute system plus surrounding okay it constitute system plus surrounding again you go back and see what is how it is defined for a cycle now this is for a process okay now from this i can conclude for a reversible process ds is equals to dq by t and for a irreversible process ds is greater than dq by t okay so this side ds is greater this side is greater now if i have to equalize it so dq by t plus something that is that is entropy generation so in a irreversible process there are two types of entropy so there are two types of entropy entropy is because of two reasons first is entropy that is transferred entropy transfer now this is the entropy that is transferred across the boundary it is transferred from the outside because of the heat transfer second is entropy generated entropy generation entropy generation now this happens inside the system okay now if i have a system and this system is going through uh, this system is going through a irreversible process so th there will be some heat transfer that is happen because of this 
this is entropy transfer now there will be some entropy that is generated internally because of friction because of friction that is called as entropy generated so entropy transfer is called as external irreversibility and entropy generated is called as internal irreversibility so this is internal irreversibility this is external irreversibility very important external irre irreversibility is because of heat transfer and internal irreversibility is generated inside the system because of friction because of friction okay so next thing so earlier we started with clausius theorem then clausius inequality and now increase in entropy principle increase in entropy principle now there are things that you should know okay there in questions sometimes people get confused look if i am saying isolated system or if i am saying universe if i am saying process because it is also system plus surrounding okay so they are all one and the same thing they are all one and the same thing you have to find out entropy this way okay and so they can ask you calculate entropy for a process calculate entropy for the universe or they can ask you calculate entropy generation so again you can calculate by this entropy generation okay now what is increase in entropy principle increase in entropy principle says that entropy for a isolated system always increases or remains constant it is always greater than equal to zero now please do not get confused uh, you know from the two three things that we have discussed we started with we started with clausius theorem okay then we came up with clausius inequality that says cyclic integral dq by t is equals to zero for a reversible okay so it is less than equal to zero then we have talked about for a process so there i have said dq by t for a process is always less than equal to cyclic integral of ds this is clausius inequality okay now increase in entropy principle tells you that ds change in entropy for a isolated system or universe is always greater than or equal to zero either it will be equal to zero if it is a reversible process if it is a reversible process or it will increase if it is irreversible process okay so entropy generation is equals to entropy isolated is equals to entropy of system plus surrounding is always greater than equal to zero is always greater than equal to zero okay so this statement is very very important this statement is very important okay now the entropy of an isolated system can never decrease this point is very important of isolated system they can say or universe they can say it's same thing okay so the entropy of the isolated system or the universe can never never ever decrease okay it can never decrease it can either remain constant it can either remains constant so ds isolated can be equal to zero if we have a reversible process or ds of isolated uh, uh, system will increase is greater than zero if it is a irreversible process so it always increases or it can remain constant only when the process is reversible and this is called as increase in entropy principle this is called as increase in entropy principle okay entropy change for a system entropy change for a system now i have told you look entropy for a universe always increases but for a system because you see 
इफ दिस इज द यूनिवर्स इट हैव मोर देन वन सिस्टम वन सिस्टम टू सिस्टम थ्री सिस्टम ओके एंड देन सराउंडिंग इज देयर नो एंट्रोपी ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्स is always greater than or equal to zero but if i talk about this system only then what can happen so let's talk if this system is going uh, going through a reversible process reversible process so we know that ds is equals to dq by t plus entropy generation now entropy generation is always zero entropy generation is always zero for a reversible process Entropy generation is zero for a reversible process. So this is equals to zero. This is entropy generation. Now, if you are adding heat, there is a reversible heat addition process. Okay. So if I am talking about reversible process, I am only going to use this equation. Okay. Now if I am adding heat, so what is going to happen? DQ, DQ. will increase adding heat right so dq will increase when dq will increase that means ds will increase okay ds will increase okay so ds will increase means ds is greater than 0 and that means s2 minus s1 is greater than 0 and s2 is greater than s1 that means entropy is increasing entropy is increasing so whenever a system goes through a reversible heat addition process reversible heat addition so if you are adding heat entropy increases same happens with reversible heat rejection when you are rejecting heat so dq is going to decrease when dq is going to decrease ds is going to decrease means s2 is less than s1 and entropy is decreasing entropy is decreasing if it is a reversible adiabatic process so dq is equals to 0 means ds is equals to 0 and entropy remains constant s2 is equals to s1 that means entropy remains constant so when entropy remains constant what does that process called when entropy remains constant this process is called as isentropic isentropic process isentropic process so from this can i conclude it's a very important statement that i am going to make now okay so can i conclude that a reversible adiabatic process that a reversible adiabatic process is an isentropic process yes i can i have just showed you here okay so our every point every word is important it should be reversible it should be adiabatic these two conditions must satisfy then you can call it as isentropic process so reversible adiabatic process do not take this statement lightly every word is is important okay reversible is important adiabatic is important reversible adiabatic process is an isentropic process okay so entropy change for a system undergoing reversible process may increase decrease or remain constant okay so when a system goes through a reversible process entropy can increase entropy can decrease and entropy can remain constant you see entropy for a universe will always increase but for a particular system it can increase it can decrease or it can remain constant it can remain same for a system it's very important people get confused in this okay this is also important interview question okay so student get confused okay so for a universe it is always going to increase but for a system it may increase it may decrease or it can remain constant okay entropy change for a reversible adiabatic process is zero and that is why it is called as isentropic process it is called as isentropic process okay what about irreversible process now in irreversible process this is not equal to zero so i have entropy generation also now very important point entropy generation i have told you entropy generation 
is equals to ds of universe is equals to ds of isolated system is always greater than equal to zero so entropy generation is always greater than equal to zero it is zero it is zero for reversible and it is greater than zero for irreversible so in this case it is always greater than zero so it is a positive value it is a positive value it is a positive value okay now let's talk about if our system is going through a irreversible process so first is irreversible adiabatic irreversible adiabatic means ds is equals to adiabatic is there that means dq will be zero so zero plus something positive that means ds is greater than zero and s2 minus s1 or i can just say s2 is greater than s1 and entropy is increasing entropy is increasing so you see that is why i, I was saying earlier that reversible adiabatic process is isentropic but irreversible adiabatic is not isentropic you see here entropy is increasing here entropy is increasing so it it is it doesn't necessarily mean that if the process is adiabatic it is isentropic it should be reversible adiabatic it should be reversible adiabatic then only it's isentropic otherwise it's not okay second is irreversible heat addition so you are adding heat so i can say ds is equals to you are adding heat so dq is increasing so this is positive plus this is also positive so that means ds is greater than zero and here also entropy is increasing so here also entropy increasing third case is what about heat rejection when the heat is rejected so you see here we have three cases one two and three okay first case ds is equals to you are rejecting heat so ds is going to decrease so it is a negative value plus i know that this is always positive this is always positive now the important point here is let's say this is positive okay so let's say this is positive so this is increasing now this is negative so this is decreasing now if the decrease due to this is less than increase due to this that means overall entropy is increasing overall entropy is increasing okay if the decrease due to dq by t is less than the increase due to entropy generation then the overall entropy is increasing now next is ds is equals to now if the decrease due to this is equals to increase due to this okay do you understand this entropy is decreasing because of dq by t and entropy is increasing because of entropy generation now if the decrease is equal to increase they are same so they are cancelling each other and if they are cancelling each other entropy will remain constant entropy will remain constant very 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 important when entropy will remain constant i can say it's a isentropic process so for a irreversible process for a irreversible process in heat rejection we can also find a isentropic process okay now third case if the decrease is more than the increase then entropy will going to decrease if the decrease in entropy because of dq by t is much more than the increase due to entropy generation then entropy is going to increase so you see irreversible adiabatic entropy is increasing irreversible heat addition entropy is increasing but for irreversible heat rejection entropy may increase may decrease or may remain constant or may remain constant okay i hope this is clear okay let's go on with some questions 
एंट्रोपी जनरेटेड कैन बी टेकन एज अ क्राइटेरिया टू इंडिकेट द फिजिबिलिटी ऑफ प्रोसेस विच वन ऑफ द कंडीशन आर करेक्ट नाउ रिवाइज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल क्लोज योर माइंड एंड टॉक एंड सी वट डू यू नो अबाउट एंट्रोपी जनरेशन आई नो दट एंट्रोपी जनरेशन is always greater than equal to zero i know this right now it is equal to zero for what reversible process it is greater than zero for irreversible process and it is greater than zero it is impossible it is impossible so let's talk about the three statements entropy generator is equals to zero then the process is reversible process absolutely correct entropy generation is greater than zero greater than zero irreversible process absolutely correct entropy generation is less than zero entropy generation is less than zero and it is impossible this is also correct so what are the statements that are correct 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 are correct okay now this is not a special question okay this is not a special question i think it's a gate question i guess i don't remember it uh, properly but you see like special questions will be fairly simple now here you have to analyze three statements so it's one step ahead okay but it can be asked it's not that it is not impossible that a special cannot ask this kind of question of course they can ask okay move on isentropic flow is now this is important now this is esc question you see very simple isentropic flow isentropic now what do i know isentropic means isentropic means entropy change in entropy is equals to 0 and s2 is equals to s1 means entropy will remain constant this is what i know now i have just seen that this condition can only happen in reversible adiabatic process okay now it can also happen in irreversible heat rejection but it is not mandatory that whenever you have irreversible heat rejection you will have a isentropic process because here entropy can increase also can decrease also and can remain constant so out of three cases one case it's possible but you see for this it is always the same case so whenever there is reversible adiabatic system or process it is a isentropic process so what is correct reversible adiabatic flow okay now there is one more statement that sometimes uh, in uh, questions they are asked they ask that you see uh, i can say that reversible adiabatic process is always isentropic isentropic just care, carefully examine this statement what i am saying a reversible adiabatic process is always isentropic pro okay a reversible adiabatic process is always isentropic but but the reverse is not true but the reverse is not true why reverse is not true because if it is a isentropic process it may happen that it is this process irreversible heat addition but reversible adiabatic process is always isentropic process isentropic process may or may not it may or may not be reversible process so what do like i have seen how they, how do they give it they, they tell you in the question that uh, tell if the statement is correct a reversible adiabatic process is always isentropic but the reverse is not true okay so this you can see that if this statement is correct or not okay so they can modify this statement in several ways but you need to know the concept 
that are reversible adiabatic process is always isentropic process, but the reverse is not true. Okay, moving on. Clausius inequality is stated as very, very, very important. Clausius inequality is stated as cyclic integral. Now, you first of all see they are asking for what? They are asking for cycle, for a cycle because cyclic integral is given. Now, what have we understood? Cyclic integral of dq by t is less than equal to 0, is less than equal to 0. This is the Clausius inequality. 10 seconds question. Okay, and this is the IES question. But for sure, they can ask you in HPCL. Very, I mean, there is a huge possibility, high possibility that they can ask this kind of question in HPCL. Okay, moving on. For a real thermodynamic cycle, which one of the following is correct? Which one of the following is correct? D cyclic integral of dq by t is 0. Cyclic integral for dq by t is less than 0. They are asking for re real thermodynamic cycle. So, what do we know? Cyclic integral of dq by t is less than or equal to 0. And this have two cases, okay? Is equals to 0 and less than 0. Or also one more case where it is greater than 0. Now, this is for reversible cycle. This is for irreversible or real cycle. And this is impossible. This is impossible. So, they are asking for real cycle. So, I can simply say that cyclic integral of dq by t is less than 0. That is the correct answer. Okay. Moving on. The next question. A cyclic heat engine receives heat at, so Q1 is equals to 600 kilojoule. T1 is equals to 1000 Kelvin. Q2 is equals to reject heat rejected is 450 kilojoule and T2 is equals to 300 Kelvin. Okay. So, I have a heat engine. It is taking 600 kilojoule at 1000 Kelvin and at 300 Kelvin, it is rejecting 450 kilojoule. The rest is work, net work. Okay. They are asking the quantity cyclic integral of dq by t and the efficiency of the engine are. So, I need to find out cyclic integral of dq by t. So, this is q1 by t1 plus q2 by t2. Okay. Now, what is q1? q1 is 600 by 1000 plus 450 by 300. Now, you have to be very cautious here. This q2 is the heat rejected by the system, heat rejected by the heat engine and therefore, you need to put minus sign here. You need to put minus sign here and when you calculate this, it is, uh, how much do you get? 6 by 10. you will get minus 0 0.9 kilojoule per Kelvin, kilojoule per Kelvin. This is your cyclic integral of dq by t. Okay. Second, they are asking efficiency. If it, although you can directly calculate it here, you see minus 0 0.9 is only in one option. So, you already know this is the correct option, minus 0 0.9. Okay. But you, if you want to calculate efficiency of heat engine, what is it? It is Q1 minus Q2 by Q1 is equals to 1 minus Q2 is what? 450 by 600. 450 by 600. And this is 1 minus 
0.75 and this is 0.25. So efficiency we have gotten 25%. 25%. Okay. So we already knew this is the correct answer and we have proved this as well. Okay. So these kind of questions you can get in HPCL exam. Okay, very simple questions. I, actually, this is also one step ahead. They have two concepts. Okay, I don't think they are going to ask this question, but because I couldn't find any uh, questions in HPCL uh, from this concept, so I took some other questions. Okay, but rest assured, very simple questions they will ask you. Very, very simple questions they will ask you. Okay, now the point is that how you are going to do it. Okay, how you are going to practice it. Again, I am going to tell you one thing. HPCL when you talk about HPCL uh, in thermo from thermodynamics around I think uh, in 2021 uh, around 15 questions 14 I think 14 to 15 questions they have asked from just thermodynamics okay if I am correct like there could be plus minus 2 okay let me write it here 15 plus minus 2 questions they have asked very simple question, very simple, okay, definition based questions, and conceptual questions, okay, conceptual questions, and if it is a numerical, then one stop, uh, one step, solution, questions numericals okay so this should be your approach when you are preparing for hpcl okay now i know that i have not covered i you know a lot of questions in this okay now there is a reason there is a reason look if you are with me on if you were with me on 19th of july 21st of july and 23rd yeah that is today if you were with me in these days then i have we have revised together we have revised all concept all formulas and concepts now what is the next step today is 23rd right 24th is tomorrow from monday 25th Monday 25th of July, we I am going to take thermodynamics in the gate rankers monsoon series and our focus is gate level questions. Our focus is gate level questions. Although I have taken questions from some good books, uh, ESC conventional questions, okay, but the standard is of gate only, okay. Very good questions and I we will take it from 25th to 31st July okay one by one we are going to talk about uh, questions only okay numericals only so if you want to practice your questions uh, I you can join me from 25th July 6 p.m. 6 p.m. on Baiju's exam prep YouTube English channel okay YouTube English channel Okay, so I will see you on 25th, okay, evening 6 p.m. And we are going to practice some good questions, okay. We are going to practice some good questions. And please subscribe also BEP channel so that you will give, give, get the notifications, okay. Not just from my, uh, for, for my videos, but everyone's videos whenever we cover new topics and everything, okay. So 25th July, I am going to see you 6 p.m. And we will practice some good questions. Okay, and keep practicing, keep revising, and I am going to see you on 25th July evening. Okay, and thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your time.